I'm a registered dietitian. I'm an exercise physiologist. I'm a cardiologist. I'm a clinical pharmacy coordinator. I'm living with heart disease every day. And I live with coronary artery disease. Clinical research is done to find out what works and what doesn't work in exploring new therapies um, to treat illness. Patients who are enrolled in a clinical trial um, have a baseline screening period in which we're looking at how their health is now, a treatment phase in which we administer the study product or um, place a device, and the follow-up phase in which we follow the patient to understand the impact of the treatment on the patient's health. One of the benefits of participating in a clinical research study is contributing to the science so that we understand um, and can advance the cures for disease processes. We wouldn't have beta blockers and some of the other drugs that we have to lower heart rate or to lower cholesterol or things like open heart surgery or drug eluting stents without people having participated in clinical research. So the things that help you and I now, um, people had to volunteer and go through clinical research trials in order to make sure that they were safe for the general population. An additional benefit of participating in a clinical trial would be for the individual themselves um, because in most cases the care that they receive as part of the clinical trial, the extra physical exams and um, the testing, the diagnostic testing that is done, is done of, at no cost to them. In addition, they have access to healthcare professionals on a more regular basis. And so patients who are in a clinical trial have the phone number of a nurse coordinator as well as their physician that they can contact um, to ask any questions of their health um, within the research study, but also they entertain questions about their normal health as well. So the costs involved in a clinical research trial vary from study to study. A lot of clinical trials will cover the cost of the diagnostic testing, um, but don't cover the cost of your time, um, the hotel, and the travel. Some research protocols do cover those items, so it's important um, to know when you're participating in a clinical trial what the true cost would be for you, not only for your time, but also financially. The consent form will spell this out as well. The kind of people that the researchers are looking for to participate in a clinical trial depends on the research protocol itself. The research protocol tells us who we're looking for by age, gender, disease process, what drugs the patient may or may not be on, what medical history is acceptable and what isn't. When a patient is considering enrolling in a clinical trial, there is a a sheet of paper or many sheets of paper that are a consent form and what it is looking to do is to spell out the commitment of the patient, the risks and the benefits of being in the clinical trial as well as the patient's rights um, and then any other information that the researchers would like to convey to the people who are considering enrolling in the clinical trial. I think it's very important that you carefully read the consent form and speak to those who know you best on your care team whether that be a physician, a nurse, a dietitian, an exercise physiologist, and talk to them about what you're considering. I think it's important to understand the risks and the benefits and ask as many questions as you can so that you understand the purpose of the research study, if it will in fact benefit you, the risks um, that are involved and then the time commitment. It's very important before you um, decide to participate in a clinical research trial. The risks involved in a research study vary depending on the study. It could be a simple phone follow-up, in which case there is no risk except for what you're not willing to disclose at the time of the phone call, um, all the way to very invasive types of end-of-life research that we do. So you need to work with your research coordinator and clearly look at the consent form um, to understand what, you, what risks you would be undertaking and what the chances of each of those risks would be. Research subjects are protected by the Institutional Review Board, which is an independent body made up of uh, healthcare professionals and lay people that review every protocol and consent form to assure that what is being done is ethical and fair for the patient and to make sure that we are not asking too much of, of individuals 
in the name of science. So the easiest way to find out about research opportunities would be to ask your cardiologist or primary care physician. There are also many reputable websites, um, such as the National Institutes of Health website, the Minneapolis Heart Institute Foundation website would be another one, and then most large academic institutions also have um, their clinical research on their website as well. My name is Rachel Olson, and I'm a research nurse clinician at the Minneapolis Heart Institute Foundation.